plaintiff, Keaton Burnett, also known as Belladonna, says she first started performing in drag at the age of 18. And she met the defendant while competing in drag shows. Belladonna suing because after she refused to let the defendant borrow her wig, the defendant snatched it and it ripped. Defendant Andrew Lowry Gill, also known as Rubella Sachet, says she grew up in a small town where being gay was not accepted. So she moved away and pursued a career in drag. Rubella admits that she grabbed Belladonna's wig, but she insists it ripped when Belladonna pulled it out of Rubella's hands. Therefore, she doesn't owe. Why don't you give me some background on yourself? So a little background on me. Uh, I was born in Dublin, Ireland um, in 1999. When I was 15, I saw my first drag show. I took my cousin's ID, some would say borrowed, and went <laughs> to the local gay club. And I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know what was going on, but I was like, this is fabulous and I want more of that. So cut to three years later when I was 18, I moved to London and started doing drag there. And then recently I had just moved to Chicago in January when I met Rubella. We were competing in a competition in Boys Town. I will not say the name of the competition because I did not win. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm told they have a big female impersonator community here in Chicago. No, there's hundreds of drag queens, sometimes way too many. <laughs> in Chicago? Yeah. I've heard that there's a lot of places in Chicago, um, locations that people go. Yeah. The people um, who want to see female impersonators. Well, I'm trying to normalize everything <laughs> yeah. that society looks down on and discriminates against. So I want to normalize it. We're doing a public service announcement. Yeah. And so the people have stopped discriminating. It bothers me so much to discriminate. Maybe because black folks have suffered so much discrimination. Uh, you all don't quite go back to the history of slavery and breaking up your family and taking your family. Uh, but your family have broken up from you in many instances, unfortunately. But it's still discrimination, modern day discrimination, which African Americans have faced. So I fight for my community. I fight for your community because you're being discriminated discriminated against, and we gotta normalize it all. It's hard for many of us, you know, we aren't accustomed to it, and it bothers some to watch men, same-sex men and same-sex women kiss, hold hands publicly, because we're not accustomed to it, just like you weren't accustomed to interracial dating at first. Mm -hmm. In the 50s, you see a black and white couple together, oh, you mad and you don't want to see it, I can't take it. But the more you saw it, the more it became normal. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. what we're trying to do. I'm trying to make the LGBTQ community and their sexuality normal. Yeah. And drag queenship. Yeah. When ship, okay, no. <laughs> a new one, but I'll take it. That's drag right. Queen ship. <laughs> that sounds royal, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Drag, drag queen, queen ship. ship. <laughs> you have your drag queen ship. I'm going to use that phrase from now on. That's right. That's going in my Instagram <laughs> bio. I heard that there's a lot of places in Chicago. Yeah. For people um, who want to see female impersonators. Well, I'm trying to normalize everything yeah. that society looks down on and discriminates against. So I want to normalize it. Defendant Andrew Lowry Gill, also known as Rubella Sachet, performs drag with the plaintiff, who's suing because she claims Rubella stole her wig and ended up damaging it. You say she beat you in a contest? No, Rubella has never beaten me in a contest. She's done better than me, but never beaten me. <laughs> <laughs> One, that's right. Splitting hairs there a little bit. Cut. Your ego is too big for that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to admit that you... Another education moment. Are both you all gay? Yes. Yes. Okay, because Very. as we've told, as I've told people based on the knowledge that I have, I have a cousin, he's a female impersonator. Oh, wow. And he, I went to his show, my wife and I, and the kids in San Francisco, and it was entertaining. And so what I've learned, however, is that not every female impersonator is gay. Right? You're correct. Yeah. yeah, and people don't know that. I promise you everyone believes that a man who dresses up in women's clothes and performs, they believe he's gay. 
Oh. Yeah, there's a lot to it. There's also women that do that are drag queens as well, AFAB performers. Because they're women dressing up as drag queens. Mm -hmm. And drag queens dress up. Am I using the right word? I think I'm, I can <laughs> say drag queens. Y'all can say it. Female impersonators. You women can use the dress up queen. as themselves, just in an exotic and overstated manner, mm -hmm. uh, as female impersonators do. Okay. Got that out the way, y'all better learn something and stop messing with folks in the female impersonator industry. Yeah. And so, she was beating you at all the contests. Yeah, every single one. So me and Rubella became friends. We competed against each other quite a lot, but we were never competitive at the start. But then over time, I noticed she started to get a bit more competitive and a bit irritated when I would get certain attention that she wouldn't get or praise that she wouldn't get, which I was always gonna get praise she doesn't get, because we're, that sounded a lot more vain than I meant it to. We do very different types of drag. So I sing and I host and she performs and dances and all of that. So we were always gonna be different. And then basically one day we had a competition. It was the 22nd of July um, and we were in the dressing room having drinks, like chilling getting ready. And I had this really expensive wig that I had just bought on a wig head. And Rubella comes over and asks, can I borrow the wig? Obviously not, I was about to wear it. I needed it to go on stage. So I turned around and I was like, no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna wear it. And she thought being funny, she would take it. So she grabbed it and ran out of the dressing room. And this was a Monday. I was not in the mood. <laughs> you were not <laughs> in the mood. It was a Monday or a Tuesday, I was not in the mood. And basically I followed her out I grabbed the wig out of her hand. She held on really tightly. And with those cheap press on nails, she tore my wig. <laughs> and I am seeking damages, essentially. Uh, the $500 that that wig cost, I would like back. I love it. All right, uh, you're so colorful. And let me say this, people wanna know how I'm so embracing of my son, Greg, being gay. It's because my brother was gay, my favorite brother. He was my favorite brother. And he, him and his friends were so colorful and amusing. That's why it's normal to me. It was normalized seeing my brother and his friends come over every day, however often, and my mother was embracing. All of us were of my brother. You better not say nothing about my brother and them projects. We turned the whole projects out. You mess with our brother now. I don't care what he is. So that's how I normalized and that's very amusing language, and uh, I'm sure you're gonna give me some fun and amusement like I was used to as a kid. Yes, so I'm from Michigan originally. I moved to Chicago five years ago. I'm a Michigander. What part? I am from, I grew up in Lapeer County, which is like right by Flintport mm -hmm. and Port Huron. Yep. A little small hick town, so being queer or gay wasn't okay there. So all my teachers told me to run away and go to school in a different state, in a different city. So I did. And a year after... Your family never embraced you? Uh, my mom did. My family was very kind of standoffish. I don't really talk to any of my family except my mom. I know my brothers aren't dead. That's, that's it. I, I say happy birthday to them. They that's don't about have the courage to embrace you. Yeah. Let me say, you all families who won't embrace a child, you're cowards. Yeah. You have it's... a child and not embrace them because of their sexuality? What type of parent, friend, or family member are you? Yeah. It's definitely a learning experience. So some of my family is completely okay with it and they're still learning, you know, what it is and why now I do it. Now you said something that I'm confused about because we're all evolving and I've been confused as <laughs> to I hear an overall reference to queer that gives me the impression that is every segment. When you say queer, you mean every segment of the LGBTQ community. Is that right? Yes, yes. it's like an so umbrella. So that covers everybody. You don't have to say LGBTQ community. You can just say the queer community. Yep. And it means the exact thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's about how you want to say it. I like saying LGBTQ more than I like saying <laughs> queer. Uh, there ain't nothing wrong with queer, but I just tell you what I like to say most. So, am I getting in trouble? <laughs> That's all right for me to say no, how okay. I like to characterize the LGBTQ community if there's a choice, right? Yeah. All right. Once again, I got a great education on that because I'm like, now which one is queer? Because the Q is already in there. 
lesbian, gay, bisexual, LGBT, transgender, mm -hmm. Q is queer, right? Yes. Yes. So it sounds like within the initial that describes the community that queer is separate. So you're saying, however, queer is all is any of those. Yes, but all some right. people can identify as queer too. Since how is that gay. different specifically? It normally pertains to people who identify as non-binary. A lot of people will go as queer non-binary. Yeah, see, which I've been means... in trouble with that too. Non-binary <laughs> and binary. Define that for me. Non-binary means they do not identify as a man or a woman. Sometimes they identify as a person. Sometimes they may feel more feminine and sometimes they may feel more masculine. But sometimes they don't feel like either and they just go by they, them. How pronouns. about sexuality? Is there a specific attraction yes. to the opposite or the same sex? So for non-binary people, that's why I said they generally will use queer because it's like less specific as to who... Who they might engage yeah. in their intimacy with. Mm -hmm. Okay, good enough. See, I just want people to know it is so important, y'all. So important. Yeah. Defendant Andrew Lowry Gill, also known as Rubella Sachet, performs drag with the plaintiff, who's suing because she claims Rubella stole her wig and ended up damaging it. $500 now, how about this, the wig? You oh. snatch her wig because she wouldn't let you wear it because she needed it? No, I took Because her... if you did, you're admitting that she's more grand than you. <laughs> No, this is all spanning out of jealousy. In Chicago, I'm known as the Sparkle Queen and the delusional diva of Boys Town, whereas Belladonna, unfortunately, she does not have any title that she's known by. She's just Belladonna. Uh, but I don't have to spend as much money as her to look better than her, whereas she has to have these amazing outfits that barely fit her maid that she spends hundreds of dollars on. And I can buy stuff off the rack and look twice as good. You just can uh, buy a wig for 500 Who spends $500 on a wig is my question. Is this more? It's supposed to be more or less? I don't know. Wigs it wasn't cost that a nice. thousand a good wig. I just, y'all got me confused on women's hair. Because some <laughs> weaves you can get for $100, another weave you got to pay a thousand. I think you can get them up to three or four grand, right? Wigs you can get for three, four, five grand, and the other one a hundred dollars, right? Yeah. And the more styled it is, the more expensive it gets because you have to pay to get it styled. Now, this specific wig was sitting in the fitting room on a mannequin head. Very well styled. We could say. <laughs> um, it was really pretty. It was cute. I wanted to borrow it not for that night, another night. So it wasn't as though, you know, I wanted to use it and she was using it. I wanted to take it home and use it for another show later that week. And I jokingly grabbed it and ran away, and I was like, oh, I'm taking your wig. <laughs> and the girl came after me and snatched the wig out of my hand, and she's blaming it on my cheap nails. I spend good money on my nails, Your Honor. Good money, these are acrylics. Nobody's gonna clock them otherwise, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but let me just tell you, you just admitted to, to a crime. I didn't admit you to a crime. You said you took the wig and ran. I didn't run. I don't run. You said that? <laughs> $500 is your judgment. She has admitted to taking the wig and running off with it, and it was damaged. Exactly. Classic. It was total. Negligence. $500 is your judgment. Keep on having fun. Keep on amusing people, and don't worry about the haters. The haters are always going to be there with you. Don't worry. Like, racists are going to be with us. Bigots don't like homosexual or members of the LGBTQ community either. A bigot is a bigot. I don't care if they're in the pool pit or if they're on the street. So let's all keep that in mind and try to avoid fitting in that category. That's my judgment and my lecture. <laughs> when I get this wig now to replace the one you so gracefully damaged, I will let you borrow it under fear of death. <laughs> Thank you. 
and I'll look better in it too. Ah, the nerve.